you, Stan. And now a reading from the Gospel of John. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. As the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me lives because of me. Yeah, cringeworthy, right? Yes. This is the bread that came down from heaven. It isn't like the bread your ancestors ate and then they died. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. <clears throat> We're going to save that text for later. In the early 2000s, I served a church in Riverdale, Illinois. It was a town whose northern border was the southern border of Chicago. And um, it was between Chicago and some wealthy suburbs uh, with a direct route, State Street. Went right through the middle. 95% of the community was black, 50% under the age of 18, more than average number of grandparents raising grandchildren, and en route. So you can imagine. You get the picture, right? My colleague and friend, Irene, the minister in the local Methodist church, is a black woman. We both grew up in stable and loving middle-class families, uh, trained, raised in the church, Although she was a child of the military and joined the Navy, we otherwise were similarly educated with college degrees and then seminary. We served in ministry for a similar number of years, and we had become friends over the three-ish years of serving in that community. We decided to hold an anti-racism workshop our, our congregations combined. And one of the first weeks of that workshop, we did an exercise called the Invisible Backpack. Any of you familiar with the Invisible Backpack? Peggy McIntosh uses the analogy of an invisible backpack to talk about white privilege, the unearned privileges that I, those of us with white skin can count on cashing in on each day, but about which we are meant to remain oblivious. The 20 or so of us lined up on one side of the room, and with each question that was asked, we could take a step forward if we could answer yes. I can, if I wish, arrange to be in the company of people of my race most of the time. Yes. I can go into a music shop and count on finding the music of my race represented into a supermarket and find the staple foods which fit my cultural traditions into a hairdresser's shop and find someone who can cut my hair. Yes. Whether I use checks, credit cards, or cash, I can count on my skin color not to work against the appearance of financial reliability. Yes. If I should need to move, I can be pretty sure of renting or purchasing housing in an area which I can afford and which I would want to live. Yes. The questions go on, and Peggy has added questions uh, since one of those years in the early 2000s when I took that quiz the first time. After the 25 or so questions had been asked, I found myself on that side of the room, as far as I could go. And when I turned around, my friend Irene had taken five or six steps. I gasped 
And then, like every fragile white woman, I started sobbing. In spite of all our similarities and the things we had achieved, we also had grown up and lived in a racist culture where my white skin gives me privileges that Irene doesn't have. And the backpack has become a symbol for me of not forgetting that I live with racism every day. It's all around me. And that it's on me to learn about and use my privilege to change the systems and structures. The election season is ramping up. And while we can't talk about candidates from the pulpit, we can talk about our behaviors during this tense time. Of course, there are other tensions in our lives. You heard them in the prayer that we offered in the um, reading of guidance and integration, the death of loved ones, the infighting that happens in families and communities, the anxiety about health concerns, concerns for our planet, concerns for peace in our world. Perhaps internal concerns plague you, ponderings about your purpose, how to be your best self in a complex world, anxiety about relationships or finances. These are huge, complex issues. And no one thing we do or don't do as individuals is going to remedy them completely, but... If we all do certain things, the conditions can be right for change to happen. What we do matters. So how do we remember what to do? Paul gives us a starting place with those suggestions that we should put on the belt of truth and the breastplate of justice and the shoes of peace and the helmet of healing and the shield of faith and the sword which is the good news of God, I hope those images made you cringe as well. Uh, I, for one, am opposed to using war imagery or militaristic language in a way that will encourage us. I believe it actually encourages us to think in terms of us's and them's. It reinforces those binaries the world is way too complex for us to be thinking in black and white terms when the world is full of gray. Now, I'm not naive. I do believe there are real struggles. I mentioned some, but I, but I think the language of fight, of over against, sets us up for those dualities that perpetuate the dominant culture. Men at the top representing God and women at the bottom subservient. White versus people of color. European ancestry from people from other parts of the world. Christian versus other religions. Cisgender versus transgender. Able-bodied versus differently abled. Heterosexual versus homosexual. English speaking versus English as a second language. We could go on. If we are to stand on the side of justice, we have to be willing to stand with those in the non-dominant culture, and that takes energy. It takes a mind and a body and a soul and a heart that's willing and nourished and encouraged. Our work is to deconstruct the world upheld by oppressions of patriarchy, white supremacy, capitalism, colonialism, and more. So what are the right tools for that journey? What are the tools in our toolbox? Better analogy, I think. So the knapsack is one for me, you heard about my story, but maybe you can imagine it as a tool that you carry around with you to capture the stories that you hear that encourage you 
to be on this journey, to be selfless and compassionate and courageous. My dad used to carry hankies in his pocket. Do you know about hankies? <laughs> yeah. Um, they often were used on Sunday morning when we had milk up mustaches on our faces. It was icky, those hanky wipes, usually with a little lick on them first. But there was one time when I had really disappointed my dad. And I was crying in the car as we drove to our destination, and he pulled out his hanky, and he handed it to me so I could wipe my tears before we got out of the car. Hankies remind me of comfort and compassion. One year, <clears throat> I made a Lenten fast commitment that I would give money, all the money in my wallet, to a person that I passed on the street corner. One time, during that six weeks, <laughs> I had just cashed a check. I debated, I seriously debated, and then I thought, nope, I've got to live my commitment. And that money all went out of my pocket to the person standing on the street corner. He needed it way more than I did. So I think of the cash of compassion. I often encourage us to breathe do you ever stop during the week and find yourself holding your breath or breathing very shallowly? Some anxiety has captured you, and you know that all you need to do is take a deep breath, and it doesn't seem so overwhelming anymore. Our breath, right, is a symbol of the spirit that lives within us all the time. I like to think of the breath of protection. Before I knew that David and Amy were coming today, um, I was reminded of this ministry that takes place in the Charlotte Church. It's called the it's called the Prayer Shawl Ministry. And about 18 months ago, when I was serving them, my dad was on hospice care. We knew he would die soon. They gave Dan and me prayer shawls, and every time we wrapped ourselves in them, we remembered that there was a community supporting us and praying for us and loving us up. Shawls of prayer. I didn't know this. Did you know that the longleaf pine, the jack pine, the great sequoia, the lodgepole pine have serotonous seeds? Anyone know what serotonous seeds are? They're seeds that need heat hotter than the sun in order to open. These trees depend on forest fires to live, to extend their longevity. Who said fire was bad? We light fires each week to remind us of the spirit and life. Anita Peebles, white female ordained Baptist minister, <clears throat> writes a sermon on this text, and she adds to these analogies. She talks about the umbrella of endurance from the elements, a necklace of vulnerability 
She describes a brooch where you might have a picture of a loved one. The lip balm of speaking words of healing. A mirror of reflection to be reminded of our humanity. Tennis shoes for adventure. Binoculars to see beyond what is visible with eyes. And then a couple of my own additions. Earbuds. Earbuds to remind us that tangles occur. <laughs> Earbuds. Okay. Earbuds to remind us that we have two ears and one mouth. Earbuds to remind us to be curious instead of judging. Something simple, a smile. A smile of joy that reminds us there's always something to smile about. David Brooks uses the language illuminator versus diminisher to shine a light on people in all their glory or to diminish people, to talk negatively about them. And then another very powerful analogy, music of justice. I wonder if someone who's a singer here would start, we shall overcome. shall overcome we shall overcome we shall That's not the song that brings justice to mind for you, but there's one. There's one that tugs at your heartstrings, that brings tears to your eyes and reminds you that we're on a journey. Maybe none of those works for you. Maybe there's something else, another ritual, another practice, another garb that you can put on that reminds you of some strength, of some superpower that you have, some way that you bring your authentic self into this journey that we're all on to create a world where all people thrive. I invite you to reflect on for a moment one of these things that has been mentioned or one of your own that you can employ this week.